Hello, and welcome to our final chapter, Retrieving and Visualizing Data. In this chapter, we are going to basically bring this all together. Databases, web services, code, loops, logic, and, and we're going to solve a problem that is a multi-step data analysis. We're going to find some data on the internet, might be HTML, might be an API or whatever, and we're going to write a relatively slow process that's going to pull data slowly because these are all rate limited. This is a slow and restartable process. So you have, can be a start this and what we're going to do is we're going to have a database that's going to hold the data that we're pulling and so this might take several days actually um, if you really uh, have to do it and then you'll build up your data in your database and then what you tend to do is you tend to produce two databases. One is kind of a raw database that you know is you really it's all of its data columns are aimed at helping you figure out what you've got to retrieve yet and what you haven't retrieved yet so that's kind of a crawling spidering process. And then you find that the data is kind of nasty and ugly and it, you find that before you're going to do any analysis, you probably want to clean and process it. So you, in, in a lot of these, you're going to go from a raw database to a clean one. And this is going to be really large and this is going to be really small. And, and you're going to do this sort of once but slowly and you'll do this as many times as you need, changing this program, cleaning the data up over and over and over again. And then you'll end up with really clean data and that's relatively small and you might run programs that'll loop through this to do visualizations or analysis or some things or whatever and so you'll actually sort of use this database as a source of information okay so that's the basic pattern of what we're going to work with now this is what i call personal data mining and if you're going to do this uh, seriously python is used in lots of data mining activities but if you're going to do data mining seriously with really really large data sets we're doing uh, small to medium sized data sets um, as you might do sort of for a individual personal research versus like an organizational research where you're processing the logs of a web server or something like that and there's lots and lots of wonderful technology and what's really cool is this technology just keeps getting better and better because the whole data mining, data analysis, uh, natural language processing field is just so hot right now. It's so awesome. We're going to keep it simple and um, do stuff for ourselves for now. And, um, and, and I gave you a bunch of sample code that's going to make it so that you can adapt this sample code to solve the problems that you need to solve. So like I said, this is more of a programming exercise. Data mining might be a lot more complex. If you're doing simple research, this might actually model what you do pretty well. So the first thing that we're going to do is what's called uh, use the Google's uh, JSON API for geocoding. And uh, there are two versions of this. One version requires a key and one version doesn't require a key. Uh, Google used to make all this data available for free but with just a rate limit but now they're making increasingly requiring a key. So I give you code in uh, this zip file that kind of does both. Uh, if you really want to do something in production of taking uh, user entered places and names and getting precise latitude longitude coordinates so you can produce a nice little Google map like this. Um, and But the, if since Google has made a rate limited API I've actually pre-spidered a copy of a Google data and I have my own sort of fake Google API and so you you can do your assignments and test all your code using my fake API um, which has no rate limits and, and has no problems but uh, it's only a limited set of the data. And so this is the basic process and it's it's one of those things that it's it follows that basic personal data modeling, uh, personal personal data mining pattern. And so here's this API, which is either Google or me. I've got my own Dr. Chuck version of this, drchuck.net version of this. And there is a an input queue of the location. So this is the user data where they just put in the name of where they think they live, University of uh, Tubingen or something. And um, so this is the queue of the things that are to be retrieved. And in, in my case, when I built this map for the first time, there was like 15,000. And I, it took me days to get this. And so it would stop. And so what I would do is I would, you know, read the first one into this geoload.py, check to see if I already had it in my database. If I didn't already have a database, I would go into the API, I'd pull the data down, and I would put it in the database. And then I'll go to the next one, the next one, the next one. And so, you know, I might get a thousand in my database and then it blows up or I'm told I can't go any further. So I wait 24 hours, I start it up and it reads the first thousand and says, oh, they're all in the database already. And then it starts at 1,001. 
and then it adds that and adds that and then until it stops and so it took me several days of processing to get this data right. Now I didn't have a separate cleaning process because this data is pretty simple. I was pulling out the, the JSON and the latitude and the longitude etc. And so I didn't have to do two separate processes to clean this data up. It was clean enough right as I pulled it because um, I was talking to an API. If you're talking to the HTML, sometimes it gets nasty and ugly. Um, and so then I wrote this program that just reads through it. It just does a select and you know reads through the stuff and it prints out some uh, summary information and tells you what to do. It also prints out, and you'll see this pattern because um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing using browsers, HTML, and this happens to be using the Google Maps API, um, and putting all the data in a little JavaScript file. So these end up being uh, assignment statements in JavaScript. You can take a look at that file. And uh, all the data uh, shows up as assignment statements in the JavaScript, and then when this HTML loads, it reads this file and puts up all those pins, as long as you have access to the, the in-browser uh, JavaScript API. So the next thing we're going to talk about is PageRank, which is spidering now HTML. We talked a lot about this, spider HTML, get some links. And so up next, we're going to actually build a real database, full-featured uh, search engine using PageRank.